Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern to talk about virtual uh, teams and working in virtual environments, which funny enough, we happen to be doing right now as we speak. <laughs> How do you find that, Steve? <laughs> Highly effective, even even when we're hundreds of kilometers apart. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so work, this idea of working in virtual teams is something that I think uh, it's not a new concept, but um, it's being, I think, uh, supercharged with um, the new technology that's being released, faster networking, better software, better apps, better hardware. Um, and it's just making it a lot easier for people to connect in disparate locations. Um, using us as an example, obviously, we've worked physically in, in the same physical location many times before, but the technology got to a point where we were able to do something like this, um, this, this podcast, for instance, uh, where we are basically about eight or 900 kilometers apart and it's not a problem. Um, we can just punch these out, um, you know, as many as we want to do um, whenever we feel like it, basically. Um, and uh, th- that, that's an amazing thing. But what got me uh, interested in this is that um, in uh, the workplace I'm in at the moment has has um, shifted where 12 months ago it was just within um, the local team that's physically based in the location and now we're in this position where we're um, connecting to our uh, counterparts, equivalent counterparts in um, other states in Australia, um, becoming one big uh, team in effect. And uh, so I'm in a position where, you know, I am uh, either assisting or even managing in some instances people that are uh, not where I'm physically based. And I'm finding that an interesting challenge, uh, so to speak, um, that how do you how do you go about doing that sort of thing? How do you um, how do you work with someone who's not literally in the same place as you um, to do the same t- t- type of work? How do you know the person on the other end um, is doing what they're supposed to be doing if it's um, not something that can be, say, emailed or... Uh, you know, a report yeah. that can be emailed or something like that. Um, it this was the wonderful thing. You can't reach out and kick someone uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if they're not doing what they promised. Or it might be best for everyone if you don't get along. Who knows? But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it seems to me that, uh, and this is something that we did before, well, not before, but um, as this uh, new structure took place for us, that um, uh, our overall um, uh, management in um, in Canberra, which is where it's um, the main the main mothership is, so to speak, um, basically had the idea of getting all of us um, together in the one place for a trip to Canberra for two days for us to meet physically Mm -hmm. face to face and even though I'd met a couple of these people before it's something um, I think it's almost like a mandatory first step um, in a way that if you can have the ability to do it you really should try to get um, facilitate a way to get people to meet face to face first because anything that happens subsequently after that you've had that meeting you've had that connection you've spoken face to face it's like and it's funny you just you pick up a phone and you talk to someone and instead of just hearing a a voice that might you know could be random from anywhere you now have a face that you can put to it and uh, you can imagine start to imagine what that where that person's working and what they're doing well, I'd go a step further. I mean, I'd, I'd get the group together and personally send them on a five-day holiday somewhere nice, mm. give them some activities to do together during the day because ultimately what you really want is them to establish some sort of level of friendship or respect, which is precisely what you're saying. It's a bit hard when you go for two days and you're sort of in an office and, you know, all a bit dull really because I yeah. think that that's really the key to it is having a good rapport with the other people that you have Uh, on the team but I think the second part that's really essential and this is just as important as the rapport is the fact that you have to like using the same tools so one of the things that we've found in our teams over the last few years is that someone who's a diehard emailer you know a lot of the uh, cloud services communication services that make for really effective virtual teams um Eliminate the need for email. Yes. But you have to use that particular app. And 
what gets hard is people who keep going back to email to send documents and, you know, don't leave the document in the cloud for, for shared work um, or files. They don't save into your cloud storage where everyone can access them on team. And, and that's actually the biggest battle that I've found. Mm. I mean, you're obviously finished before you start if, if, if the team doesn't get on when you get together first up to meet, but it's that second stage is you all have to use and commit to using the tools that you've got. I think a natural extension of that to do as well, and I'm, I'm, I think it might be in my particular case um, sort of mandatory is um, getting across the board agreement on how you're approaching on doing things, um, particularly yeah. when you're working in um, a, a, a team that is perhaps having to liaise with other business areas within a larger organization and uh, you don't want inconsistency so that um, these other areas of the organization start to question what it is you're on about um so exactly. if so if you're um say for instance uh, sending out a a communication that goes out every two weeks to people um and uh, each of these virtual team members in the different locations are responsible for doing the version of it that's for that location you need to make sure that although some of the um messaging might be tailored for that office that the, there's a set format for it that there's a certain type of yeah. message that goes in there and that it's consistent so that if, for instance, you happen to interchange people, you know, um, you, someone might go to another office um, or uh, another location to fill in for someone, they can step in and uh, basically carry on and um, not uh, have to worry about whether there was a vastly different process uh, that was put in place um, or worrying about whatever idiosyncrasy had been put in place by that um, particular person or area. And that, that's an interesting thing. And the interesting thing I'm finding with this is that um, that as it's being formulated, um, if it isn't managed right, you could get disagreement um, from your uh, virtual team members to the point where you may get um, people not purposely not doing what they should be doing, um, and uh, or because they don't believe that uh, it should be done in that particular way, and that's something that you really have to be on top of uh, as you're developing a virtual team. Well, you absolutely, you have, you have to get agreement on every level uh, about the way that you want to proceed. And you've certainly hit the uh, major points there. Just an interesting aside, we were talking before about um, uh, e-games such as League of Legends and the other very popular games. That's an interesting sort of extension of teamwork. Maybe they should build more socialising into some of the work-related uh, team apps that they have because very quickly um, those teams, even though they're quite often remote, um, mm. they learn to work together very quickly because they have a common goal in the game. And, and if yeah. they don't, then uh, they they will fail. So I think maybe that's the next step for the uh, professional uh, virtual team apps is, is maybe to include a bit more socialising, you know, Maybe a few icons, grumpy face, happy face, how are you feeling this morning? You know, maybe you can get some, you know, virtual coffee credits, which you can go and cash in downstairs at the cafe. I'm not sure. <laughs> that certainly would uh, help morale, wouldn't it? You know, if, you know exactly. If, you, if you're using uh, your uh, cloud-based work manager properly, then, you know, you get extra points, extra bonuses. You yeah. know, uh, I don't know. I, I think, you know, it. At the moment, I think the one thing that's lacking from virtual team um, is the greater concept of, of that virtualness. So yeah. it's hard enough in real life, as we know, to lead a team on a project, particularly if it's a complicated project with lots of different stages. Virtualization, as we've pointed out, adds an extra layer of complexity to that. Yeah. Um, that is due to the virtual reality that sits around it, even though it's not necessarily a game. Hmm. So... Creating incentives, especially social incentives, I think uh, might be a, a nice way to go. So to all those guys out there developing those apps, well, here's your chance. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I just wanted to um, round this off um, with the technology itself, a discussion about that because it's actually quite amazing what's, what's happened. Um, I think obviously video conferencing, teleconferencing has been around for a while. But I don't think the the absolute um, plethora of um, 
available options has been as um, strong as what it has been now. So um, I know, say, larger organizations um, have security concerns, so they're probably going to go with established providers. Um, you know, Cisco might be a, a good example of that, um, that provide, a provider for larger organizations that, um, you know, can set up secure video conferencing, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, we're doing this um, <laughs> essentially over a, um, you know, a public platform, um, you know, so to speak. Um, and uh, there's no real issue. I mean, not ex- we're not exactly handling top secret documents anyway, so it's not um, nothing great there. But um, uh, I think it's quite interesting. I think the uh, what mobile device technology has introduced to the game has um, been quite interesting. Um, it allows for um, people really anywhere now to dial into these things and connect uh, wherever they are. Um, <coughs> Particularly if, um, uh, you know, whereas in the past they might have had to have stuck with the, you know, going to a physical location to log into the uh, organization's uh, tech to be able to do it. Yeah, I think you're right. The Apologies for the coughing fit. But um, I think you're right. You know, it's now it, it's using those third parties to get better outcomes. And I think that's where those apps are going to improve markedly in the next few years. And I think that will really change the uh, virtual teams. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Steve, we might uh, wrap it up there and continue on our virtual uh, virtual way because uh, I think we've been doing all right so far um, and uh, hopefully we can, can keep on going with it. Who knows where we can broadcast from in the future? <laughs> that's right. I mean, you know, once you're a couple hundred uh, kilometres apart, no difference to thousands or hundreds of thousands. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so don't forget our uh, website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there and you can subscribe to all our um, content channels and we'd be greatly appreciative of that. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.